In a previous session, we authored a test by writing to a test module. We'll now explore an improvement on that in which we achieve the same functionality using what's known as a user-defined action. When we authored our test, we created a test case that logged into the car rental application. We did this by entering a sequence of actions into the test module that supplied the necessary inputs to the login windows controls. When you think about it, logging in is a prerequisite for accessing and us testing just about anything in car rental, isn't it? So rather than have to repeat the same action line sequence every time a login is required, wouldn't it be nice if a single action existed for logging in? Well, we can create such an action, one that is built up from other actions. This is known as a user-defined action. During this session, we'll be using the project items already created in previous Getting Started sessions, the populated Login Test Module, Login Interface Entity, and Welcome Interface Entity. User-defined actions live under the Actions node, so let's right-click that node and select New Action. Name the action Login User and give it a brief description. We'll skip over the Arguments section for now and click Create. We've already written the lines necessary for our action, so let's grab them from the test case. Go to the Login Test Module, select the two Enter and one Click action lines, being sure to include all the argument headers, and cut them. Back in the action, paste the action lines from the clipboard, and save the file. And we now have a user-defined action. Now we can go back to the test module and insert a single call to login user. And that's it. We now have a convenient login action that can be reused anywhere else in our project. From another test case in our test module, from another test module, even from another user-defined action. But is it really as reusable as it could be? Well, it is as long as you want your test to only log in as Alex. But what if you need some of your tests to attempt logins with other credentials? Just write new actions? Well, a better way is to parameterize your action, which is just a fancy way of saying add arguments to it. And the addition of arguments adds another level of reusability to your actions. So now, click on the Information sub-tab of this action, and here is where we can define the action's arguments. The first one will receive a username. Let's call it uName. Don't bother with a default value. Add a description, and skip over the type and modifier fields. We're accepting the default type of string. You can read more on argument types and modifiers in Test Architect Help. Now do the same for a password argument, which we'll call pword. Click Apply, and return to the Editor sub-tab. And our changes have now been applied to the file in the form of two argument action lines, which declare uname and pword as arguments to this action. These arguments are basically containers, just like variables, which will carry values from the calling entity, the test module in our case, into the action. Well, we've defined the arguments, but our action is not actually making use of them yet. To do that, we need to modify the value arguments of the two enter actions. So let's place uname in the first enter line. This isn't quite enough, though. We've just replaced the string Alex with the string uname. But to test architect, uname looks just like another run-of-the-mill string. What we need is to tell the runtime interpreter that it's not a string, it's a variable. We do that by preceding it with a hash mark. And now let's do the same with the password. Now we have ensured that the values passed into the uname and pword arguments will be transmitted to the target application by the respective interactions. So let's make that happen. Return to the test module, Delete the previous call to login user, and then enter it again. And look, now the editor has provided us with headers for our newly created arguments. Instead of Alex, let's enter John as the username or uname. In the car rental application, John has no password assigned, so leave pword blank, and now we can go ahead and execute the test. And now we see that, from a functional standpoint, the test operates exactly as it did before we encapsulated the system level action lines into our new action. The result details show the only difference to be that it's the login user action that is now responsible for executing these system level user interface actions. One final note. It isn't just reusability that actions support. User-defined actions offer a number of benefits. 
Most notably, user-defined actions are the centerpiece of action-based testing, a methodology that allows you to take a top-down approach to design. That is, focus your design efforts on your test cases and do so at the highest level of business logic, without concern, at least initially, for lower-level implementation details. You can learn a good deal more about action-based testing, its philosophy, its practice, and its benefits by following these links. That's it for the Getting Started series of Test Architect tutorials. You're now ready to create and deploy action-based tests, at least on an elemental level. Or, to continue learning, you might explore our more advanced videos or the tutorial guide in Test Architect Help.